Welcome to the Catalyst Life Coaching Podcast with John Kim and Noelle Cordeaux. If you're inspired to begin your own life coaching practice or just want to learn a little bit more about what it's all about, visit journey.co. That's J R N I dot co for more information. Your adventure awaits. Uh, the way he described communicating is that there are two ways of communicating. You're either talking as a giraffe, because giraffes are the mammals that have the largest hearts, or you're a jackal and you're just defensive and you're deflecting and you're not listening and you're not actually taking the time to drop down and connect to what the other person is telling you that they need. Wait a minute. Giraffes have the largest hearts? Correct. Oh, man. You, you know, when you look at a giraffe, and I think they're one of the most magical creatures, um, and you look into those big brown eyes and, and lashes, um, they they look so kind and gentle. And I guess their heart, heart matches that. It's true. That's true. And, and he used the giraffe as kind of an emblem. And I've always loved giraffes for that reason. Yeah, I love that because now you could attach a visual to it. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, so we're, we're going to be learning how to talk in giraffe language today. Perfect. I love it. Um, when people think of violence, they think about, you know, throwing chairs and all of that. So when we talk about nonviolent communication, um, it's a different type of violence, right? It's not the obvious. It's not, uh, uh, I mean, I guess it can be, but it's not a physical thing. It's, 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 it's subtle. So like you said, it's a, it's a, it's a hard thing. Yeah, but it, but it's also very real. Humans have universal needs. All humans have universal needs. And they can be broken down into physical, which is just survival. Every human needs air, food, right. sleep, rest, so on and so forth. But we also have psychosocial and emotional needs that are just as essential. So humans need connection autonomy, purpose, safety, respect, and that goes cross cultures. No matter who you are and where you live, everybody has these same basic needs. And so when we're talking about violence in communication, um, think about the emotional impact that it has on your soul and your psyche when somebody really takes you out verbally. Oh, yeah. It's actually worse, I think, than like a, punch, a physical punch. It, it has lasting psychological impact. Right. And, and, and so when we're thinking about, you know, creating um, safe environments, healthy environments, it's something that we can do for and with each other. Yeah, and I think one of the things that we need as well is um, a, a safe space. And that this, this is what you're talking about, a safe space to express yourself. And so um, when that safe space isn't created uh, by people being defensive or uh, verbally violent or emotionally violent, um, then we're not getting that need met. True. And you can take it even a step further uh, using Rosenberg's theories to actually make sure that you're not only in creating a safe space, but engaging in the level of connection that people need to feel seen, heard, and understood. Yes. So let's talk about how we do that, or let's give some tips on how we can um, execute nonviolent communication on both sides. On both sides. So needs. Uh, the, the, the word needs kind of gets tossed around in pop psychology, you know, are my needs being met, so on and so forth. But what, what does that really mean? Uh, a need can be thought of as a resource. And these are little tiny bubbles of resources that, that life requires in order to sustain ourselves. Very similar to air, water, rest, food, our psychological and spiritual well-being is enhanced when our needs for understanding and support and honesty and meaning are fulfilled. So all humans have the same needs, regardless of gender, education level, uh, religious beliefs. We all have the same needs. How do you get those needs met if um, your partner or friends or whoever, you know, you're engaging uh, in life with um, are not giving them to you? Do you 
or or maybe they don't have the tools to maybe because of their upbringing or wiring it, it's it's hard for them well i think this is the big distinction is that According to Marshall Rosenberg's theory, you have to talk about it. Right. right. You have to you yes. have to talk about your needs and say these are my needs and I'd like I'd like you human in my life to meet them. Um this is this is I was just telling uh, you that how eerie this is. This is the exact conversation I was just having. I had a session at 7 a.m. right before this podcast and I, it feels like deja vu, deja vu because this is exactly what I was talking about and the client um wasn't expressing or her needs but also it's not something that came naturally for her so um and a lot of people uh can relate to this a lot of people because of their upbringing or didn't have the space uh to express their needs because the other person whether it's parents or friends or whatever they were defensive and didn't create that then they grew up and become adults get into relationships and that's a muscle that they don't know how to it's never been used so they don't know how to express themselves they don't know how to communicate I think that we're all a little out of practice. Yeah. Expressing needs, communicating them, and even thinking about what categories they could fall into. You know, I'm really good at asking for a hug if I need a hug. Mm. Um, and the analogy that I use in my home is, you know, I'm a very touch driven person. And right. if I don't get enough hugs and physical connection, I'm like a plant. You know, I need mm. hugs just like a plant needs water, uh, sunlight, and sunlight, water. Yeah. So, but that's a really common scenario to say, you know, to ask for a need to be met in, in terms of touch and hugs. But what about um, a need in terms of peace or a need in terms of honesty mm -hmm. or play? Um, these are things that we're not typically used to expressing, especially as adults, these life giving aspects of ourselves. So, the exercise that I was looking at to bring to everybody today was different categories that we as coaches can give to our clients so that they can begin to put language to the expression of needs and practice. Mm, okay. Yep. So, so what are the categories? Take, yeah, uh, so. yeah. So, so let's take Let's take connection because mm -hmm. that connection means so many different things to so many different people. Um, I'm going to toss out some words and let me know how you might ask a partner or a coworker because we do this in our company um, for your needs to be met. Mm. So how about um, the need for inclusion? Mm. So how what am I supposed to do? Tell you how I need those needs met for me? Yeah. Or how you would ask for it. Wow. You know, okay. So the first thing that comes to my mind is that's really hard to ask for because, um, I feel needy and asking for to be included. It's like, I see the, uh, I see the child at recess who's, who's not getting picked on the team and asking to be part of the team. Yeah, and, and that's and hard. And also, ego as hard. adult, like you have to put your ego aside as an adult and say that I, I need you guys. I need to be a part of this. I need to be a part of this. Yeah. Um, so you have a great group of friends that you go have burgers with and ride mm -hmm. motorcycles with. Have you ever asked for that activity to take? No, place? because also part of I think you know just being a man in today's world, there's stigma between uh, there's stigma with like like saying that you you need something like that uh, just because of, you know, men's definition. Like, I, I think it would make me, uh, and I know this is not true, but it would it would make me um, appear, uh, say, weak or vulnerable or, or not a man, you know, because he's That's asking really for That's really interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. I, I'm surprised to hear that because, especially because you and your group of friends do a really great job of, spending time with each other and experiencing inclusion together. So instead, so the way that we would express it is instead of asking for it, which is very vulnerable, we would just, mm -hmm. we would just insert ourselves into the group. <laughs> so I would, I would just show up, <laughs> you know, um, or I'd say, let's go do this. Uh, but to actually say, you know, I, I, I need to feel included because I feel excluded. That's like so vulnerable. 
Oh, wow. Okay. So I'll model it for you. So um, the way that I can think of doing this might come up in the context of work and just going throughout the day. And one of our team members may say, oh, hey, you know, I'm having a conversation with so-and-so. And automatically I feel a sinking conversation or a sinking feeling in my stomach. How come I wasn't included? So a good way mm. to express to others that I have a need to be met is, hey, I'd really like to join in on that call. Do you mind? Right. Get it done. Get yeah. it done. How about um, hopping over to the category of meaning? Um, let's look at contribution mm -hmm. that you have a desire to contribute how would you express that need to a partner or in a professional environment um i've got some ideas um you could also say um actually just ask like how can i contribute um here's what i would like to contribute you know yeah i think stating it in the positive is yeah. really effective yeah I think that's that's, not, that's really important, actually. Because you're not asking for permission. You're saying, I would like to contribute to this experience. I'd like to be a part of it. Yeah, and, and I think the, the word contribution or contribute is very important because uh, it's lined with collaboration. You're not saying, you know, you're not going in there with an iron fist. You're saying, I want to be a part of this or I have something to offer, you know. Yeah, absolutely. There's another one in here. I mean, there's a million that are, are great, but um, self-expression. You and I have had this conversation a lot. This comes under the meaning category, how to ask other people in your life and tell them that you have a need for self-expression. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And this, I, I mean, you know, working with clients, this is one of the top three things that I think a lot of people struggle with in relationships, uh, not expressing themselves because uh, they're afraid of the pushback. They're afraid of what could happen, the consequences, basically. What do you think healthy self-expression looks like? Um, I think it's a lot of using I statements. I think it's not pointing fingers or blaming. A lot of people think self-expression means like, hey, this is the problem. This is what you're doing wrong. And I think that's not self-expression. I think it's you know, an emphasis on self, meaning bring it back to you. Um, here's how I feel in this relationship. Um, because I think once you start blaming, now you're not expressing yourself, you're telling someone what they're doing wrong. So um, it's not so much like you make me feel this way. It's here. This is how I feel. This is what I'm willing to take ownership for. Um, I'm bringing this to you because I care about us. Here's yes. My, here's my expression. Yes. And I feel that self-expression also encompasses movement, taking up space, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, you know, having the autonomy to, to be silly, to be goofy, um, and to, you know, feel safe in doing that. Like if I want to put on some weird hippie music and dance all over my house, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's self-expression. Absolutely. So also, yeah, energy, um, expressing your truth in, in kind of the spirit of who you are. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, and then if people don't like it, they don't like it. <laughs> yes, it's, it's quite true. Yeah. Um, let's do another one. So another category of needs that all humans share is play. Oh, yeah, this is big. It is. So how do you express a need to experience more joy? I think it starts with intention. I think a lot of people think play means, you know, fancy vacations or trips. And, and of course, it could mean that. But I think play is something that should be threaded throughout your day. Um, and it can be found in moments. Um, but I think it's an attitude. I think it's an intention. I think there's a lightness to it, you know. And, and to express it to others around you that this is the kind of environment that I need to have in my life. I think that if um, for me personally, humor and play yeah. and silliness yeah. is just so vital to my existence that setting the tone for the work that we do every day to exist in that kind of environment where there's a lot of laughter is vital. Well, what if you want that environment um, 
and the other people don't want want that <laughs> like how do you how do you play by yourself you know what i'm saying i've had that experience for most of my adult life oh, okay. quite honestly so <laughs> right. yeah I, you know you you know me pretty well we've lived together we've shared a lot of space together right. i'm a goofy goofy person and i'm really used to kind of dancing to the offbeat by myself yeah. i have since i was a little kid and so as far as needs go you know i'm able to meet that need pretty happily on my own. Um, if someone uh, meets that part of me with derision, then I know that I need to set a boundary and move right. away from them. Right. So you um, take yourself out of that space if if your need of play is not met. Yes. Right. Got it. Yeah. And I think that's, yeah, I mean, you can't control other people. You can't, you know, um, tell your tribe that this is what's going to go down. I mean, you can, a lot of people try, but I think it's uh, the smart th thing to do is to adjust and, and, and find a different space where play is encouraged or whatever your need is. Yeah. And I just, I want to run through, uh, you know, uh, some more words that, that are perfectly valid for expressing needs because I think they're important. Yeah. So under the category of peace, it is very appropriate to ask people for ease for mm. equality, for mm -hmm. harmony, inspiration, for order, um, under the the category of connection, to ask someone for intimacy, for companionship, for um, empathy, for mm. nurturing, is is super vital. You can ask someone for stability, also under connection, to know and be known. And then under the category of autonomy is choice, freedom, independence, space, and spontaneity. Okay, if you're listening to this, I encourage you to rewind and write those words down because what an amazing list because those are words that we don't actually think about, you know? Exactly. Um, even like when you said peace, I'm like, oh, wow. Wow. I don't even think about that. <laughs> I hope for it, but it's not something that I uh, require or need. And I think that's like, even that word alone is so powerful. There was, I had, there was a, a conversation. It was like a, you know, third person conversation where a friend was reporting to another friend, a conversation that she had with a friend about his wife. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's the setup, but it really stuck with me because the, the man that was speaking turned to or friend and said, my wife, she doesn't know me. She doesn't like me. She doesn't understand me. And I'm never going to have peace. Mm. And I was just like, oh, man. Well, it, that <laughs> makes me, that also makes me feel sorry for the person that that is refusing to have peace. Like, OK, well, then you're just going to create your own prison. Well, you know, there, yeah. that can be dissected in a million different ways. Yeah. But, you know, that this concept of having peace in relationship with others, we should tap into more. Yeah, I like it, um, especially just today in the world that we live in. Lots of yes. noise, um, not a lot of peace. Uh, you got to you got to definitely find that uh, for you and what that looks like. So um, what a great reminder for me to now go to my group of dudes and say hey even though i don't know how to play basketball i need to be included i need to be on the team here i come yes and can you please <laughs> can you please video that i don't know if i'm gonna video it but i'm gonna i'm gonna ask for or it just for me uh, do okay, it for yeah, me yeah, yeah. um <laughs> i'm i'm going to uh um be accepted uh in, in and i'm also going to ask for a piece while i do it i love that yeah and i'll let you know how that turns out awesome well, thank you for, uh, and I, you know what, it, w it was such an important conversation. So thank you for this conversation about nonviolent communication. And uh, guys, if you're listening to this, uh, I, would, I would really listen to that list and, and, and think about your own life and if you are giving yourself those spaces. Absolutely. Have a great day, John. You too. All right. Be well.